y'all welcome to the realm of comics this is ashley here this is where we discuss everything comics graphic novels and manga and today i'm here to do a quick recommendation video so i have five places for you to start if you're nervous about superhero comics i get this question all the time people ask me all the time, well i'm so like marvel and dc is just too much and i say superhero comics honestly i should say like five recommendations if you want to read marvel or dc which I may end up changing the title of this video to that because this is all Marvel and DC. And I always like tell people and it's always been, you know, this is how I've been taught is like pick a character, pick a creator and just read. And eventually like stuff will connect, you will build the dots, whatever the case may be. Now, I am still learning myself. I am not a Marvel DC expert. I have actually not picked up a DC or Marvel comic in like months yikes so it's not the only medium that i read so i will never sit on this camera and say hey i'm an expert you must listen to me but i will say that as someone who's read a little bit i can give a little bit of advice from like how i've done my reading process and so i want to give you five places to start just in case you are interested and picking up Marvel and DC and you're like the whole idea of stepping into this huge universe with all of these characters is just very overwhelming and very just intimidating to me. So we're going to go ahead and jump in so this is not too long. I probably will end up doing a part two to this. I was going to do 10 but I was like mm, I like doing like recommendations of five when it gets to stuff like this because 10 a video could end up being too long. Five just seems to be a good middle ground just you know good pacing just do five chunks of five we like five I actually do like the number five I like things in multiples of five I, I don't know it was the easiest for me in math that's what it is all right so the first one that I have on my list Black Panther run by run done by ta Coates I know that a lot of people were interested in Black Panther because of the movies that came out from Marvel and the MCU and I will say that a lot of things that are in the MCU you have to consider it its own separate universe you can't look for perfect adaptations the same way that you would read a book and look for an adaptation I don't think that you should go into the MCU expecting things to be exactly the same as what you would read in the comics MCU is considered its own universe that's why it's Marvel Cinematic Universe it does it can do its own things I recommend starting with ta Coates. Um, I believe, what is his name? I'm going to forget his name. He wrote 12 Years a Slave and it's not going to come to me right now because I need it to come to me. He's doing the current run of Black Panther. But my, my first experience with Black Panther was not ta Coates. It was with Christopher Priest, which I do like the, you know, Christopher P Priest, Reginald um, Hudlin. I always feel like I butcher his name. I do like their um, their looks at Black Panther, but I feel like ta Coates is just an easy place to kind of step into Black Panther. I do not recommend going back and reading Black Panther through Fantastic Four. It's very difficult to digest um, older comics. They're not always fun. They're not always accessible. They're very, very dense. And they are essentially a product of their time. So you're not going to always find them enjoyable. But if you're interested in learning more about, a lot more about Black Panther, I would recommend checking out his run. I have a couple of the volumes up here, I believe. Yeah. So it starts with um, A Nation Under Our Feet. This is the first volume in it. And... It's just a good story to follow and the artwork in this is absolutely phenomenal and I I enjoyed what I've read of this one and I recommend picking it up. Okay so the next one that I have is actually another Marvel and I have a copy of that as well. I don't know why I didn't pull these down before I started doing this video because that would have just made more sense right for me to do that. Okay so <laughs> bargain price sticker. This is one of my favorite comics of all time. If you ever hear me talk about comics, you know that I love Miss Marvel done by G. Willow Wilson. This of course has now been taken over by someone else. This has gotten pretty expansive, but Miss Marvel done by 
G. Willow Wilson that follows Kamala Khan is one of my favorites because I think it starts in a place that's extremely accessible for people who are maybe somewhat familiar with Captain Marvel but want an easier place <laughs> to start and Captain Marvel does make appearances throughout this entire run it's 10 volumes long so if you're looking for something that's a little bit longer that gives you some some um you know fun stories some interesting looks at friendship and this this really interesting dynamic between the, the kids and the adults in the marvel universe i definitely would recommend checking this out uh brie and i actually ended up doing a live show discussion of a good portion of the series i think we were only supposed to do volumes one through three but we had read an extensive amount of miss marvel i, I really actually want to do another reread of this one but it follows kamala khan who's in jersey city and she ends up um empowered with these strange gifts after this green mist has has got her caught up she He's walking out she gets caught up in this green mist and then she's automatically changed and so she has these powers she can't tell anybody you know she's Kamala Khan by day Miss Marvel by night and she's trying to keep the secret from her friends but also trying to be just a normal teenager at the same time so this is I I like this I like that we got the representation that we got in this because we don't or we haven't I'm not gonna say we don't because now things are changing slowly but surely we haven't always got representation like this in comics and so it's just nice to see the creation of Kamala Khan and the representation that we get in this book not just with her but also amongst her friends I do not recommend <laughs> the TV show I was not a huge fan of it personally I watched a couple episodes and I was like yeah I'm not a huge fan of this I think that kids would really enjoy it but as an adult watching this I felt like she was kind of aged down a little bit whereas this like I picture them like high school a little bit older different maturity level I think we kind of lost that in the adaptation of Miss Marvel so it wasn't for me but I know a lot of people who have enjoyed it a lot of kids that would enjoy it but if we're talking about the comics here this is a good run I really enjoyed this okay so if we're talking about a kind of standalone one shot type of situation that you can read without having to worry about anything else in terms of the storytelling and how it connects to the universe at large I would recommend picking up Far Sector by N.K. Jemisin a lot of people have read this on the kind of booktube side of the community because of the fact that M.K. Jemison's name is attached to this. This is a great way to step into the DC universe if you are a fan of the Green Lantern Corps, you like that space element, and you're looking for great writing, great representation, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful artwork, this would be the place to start. I am a little bit more in tune with DC's changes and what they do than Marvel. I don't know how I got more wrapped up into DC than Marvel. I think it just naturally happened that way. When I started reading comics I just gravitated towards DC and I think it was because I was already more familiar with DC characters than I was Marvel characters and so I'm familiar with the Green Lantern Corps outside of the context of what's happening here in Far Sector but you can read Far Sector and have no working knowledge of the Green Lantern Corps whatsoever. It is very much so a self-contained story so if you're wanting to read a superhero comic and be like oh yeah like you know I'm familiar with the Green Lantern Corps DC but you don't really want to deal with all of the backlog of issues and the interconnectedness of the characters and how they fit into DC Universe as a whole, especially with Infinite Frontier and all that stuff, you can check this one out. Now granted, our character in this one, Joe, is a part of this kind of reboot that DC went through with... Um, infinite frontier and why am i not remembering any of this right now because of course when i need to remember stuff i'm never going to remember it um future state like why can't i remember anything it is very much so she's a part of that whole thing with infinite frontier and future state which if you don't know what i'm talking about it's perfectly fine 
it, none of that is going to hold much context for you here. You don't need to know any of that. Now, because I was familiar with Infinite Frontier and Future State, there was a different level of appreciation for what was going on in this. But I can say that this is a good place to start. If, out of curiosity, you want to see if you would like any of the stories that would come out of the Green Lantern Corps. Which is funny because Green Lantern Corps is probably my least favorite group out of <laughs> the DC Universe. Like, I'm not, like, a Green Lantern Corps, like, junkie. Like, I just don't care. Um, <laughs> I just, like, just, like, I, I'm not, like... I don't care that much but it is a good place to start now y'all know i always got to look out for the kids i always got to look out for the kids and those who read children's lit you know I, I could be on here and i'd be like oh yeah you know i'm definitely like i'm here to you know serve for the adults but there are adults out there that like to read ya middle grade the whole nine so i have three here that are a good place to start with dc and they all focus on one specific family so DC and Marvel as well have both tapped into the youth literature market meaning that they have tapped into trying to create content for younger reader younger um, audiences whether that's a young adult audience or a middle grade audience they are tapping into it and they're tapping into it hard because publishers are now getting hip to the fact that kids love graphic novels and comics just as much as adults and so they should probably be providing that content for them so i have three to recommend you and so we have nubia by ll mckinney illustrated by robin smith this is a look at diana's twin sister nubia there's a lot of history with nubia i believe nubia was introduced first in like the 70s and now she definitely is coming full force back into the dc universe i'm not mad at it clearly I am not mad at it. Clearly, I am not mad at this, okay? Like, I love that she is, you know, she's back in it. We stand Nubia, always, always have, always will. So if you're looking for a younger adaptation that does um, tackle equity, identity, um, a whole host of different social issues, I would recommend checking this one out. And then if you're looking for an even younger audience, but you're still wanting to be in like the Wonder Woman world where, you know, we're now looking at through, we have Nubia, we have Diana, and we have Yara Floor, then you should check these out. These are for a younger audience. These are middle grade. We have Diana, Princess of the Amazons. These are both by Shannon Hale and Dean Hale, and, and both were illustrated by Victoria Ying. But we have Diana, as a young kid and then we have which i was so happy about this we have diana and nubia princesses of the amazon and so we are getting to see the two of them together which is why i keep saying like i'm so happy that they you know we are getting nubia back into the fold here honey because child she is everything like i am every woman and let me stop because this one is a signed copy by stephanie williams and i just cannot I cannot get over that. I can't, and I believe that this one is, yep, and this one is signed by Shannon Hale. So clearly I'm a stan. I'm a whole entire stan. Okay, and the last one that I would recommend is once again from Marvel. Marvel has this ultimate line. Is it the best written thing ever? Absolutely not. But the ultimate line is so when I say the ultimate line, I'm recommending all this stuff. I read a little bit of the ultimate line just out of curiosity i've read it too when i was helping out with the podcast the comic cod on um, podcast and so with the ultimate line this is like a very very easy stepping point for people who are new to marvel comics the ultimate line was essentially created for newer readers and so when you pick up volume one of ultimate spider-man you're literally getting spider-man from the beginning now i think that of course the artwork <laughs> is a little bit better than what we would have seen like in the 60s which I've read Amazing Fantasy 15 where we get our first appearance as Spider-Man but if you're looking for origin stories and you're looking to start from the beginning but consolidate it and, and done in a way that is accessible to new readers I would recommend checking out the Marvel Ultimate line now are you going to like everything in the Marvel Ultimate line absolutely not because there are some parts of the Ultimate line that I personally have issues with there's one that Bendis did, which it's no freaking surprise because it's coming from Bendis, um, that he did that was about this alternate perspective <laughs> of of origins. And I just, mm, mm, 
I did not like how a black character was represented but then again it's been this so are we surprised no we're not surprised at all so there's that anyway y'all those are five recommendations of places to start if you're interested in Marvel or DC as always if you have recommendations and you want to share them with people drop them in the comments below if you want another video like this let me know in the comments down below as well as always if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click subscribe it and hit the bell for notifications and if you're looking to follow me on social media all the links will be down in the description box below and I will be back with another video soon.